give him praises for all of his goodness that he's been to you, but also to enjoy friendship and fellowship. Sometimes when you come to church on Sunday morning, you haven't seen each other. But most of the time, I suppose since last Sunday, or the last time you ever seen the church, or maybe you bumped into one another at the supermarket. But that's not the same kind of fellowship. One that's going to be in church. And so I welcome you and say thank you for coming this morning. I believe we have a great service in store for us. We're going to have some special singing this morning. But uh, we're glad that you're here. Uh, all of our visitors, I see some visitors. And if you're visiting this morning, would you just lift your hand? Would you do that? Well, thank the Lord. We have a number of visitors. We would invite you to come back. Actually, grace and glory is a good place to call home. So I want to say that again. Grace and glory is a good place to call home. Amen. And so as often as you can come, come and call this your home. That is, if you're not worshiping someplace else, if you already have your membership someplace else, we don't try to get folk from other churches. There are plenty of people out here that, that we want to reach. In fact, some of you might, might have received or may have received this card in the mail in the last week. Front of it says launch out into the deep, and then there's a message from me, the pastor there, asking you for your phone number or your email number, inviting you to a great commission, uh, not great commission, or is it glory? How about that? I, I just saw those initials there, and they didn't make that mistake. But thank you for coming. While I'm up, I'll just make some announcements, and uh, then we'll get into our singing and then into our special songs. And, if the Holy Spirit allows, we'll even bring a message this morning. I would love to do that, but I want to do what the Lord wants us to do. Thank you not only for coming, but thank you for your faithfulness to uh, Grace and Lord Ministry. For your praying, I know that you're a praying church family. We uh, often receive messages during the week from this year, and then I send out a couple of messages over this past week asking for your prayer for certain things and we appreciate your praying we appreciate your attendance and we appreciate your financial support to the church here at Grace and Glory. God has been good to this church Amen. and we believe that there are people in heaven this morning and a lot of folks that haven't gone yet but they're, they're experienced salvation because of the ministry of this great church. I want to thank you also I did this yesterday in my little messages that I sent out over the phone I want to thank you for a good offering for uh, food for the Ukraine. We were hoping for a five thousand dollar gold, but we were able to turn in seven thousand dollars. Your giving, your giving, seven thousand dollars. And when we put that seven thousand with the other three or four churches in the area that uh, also participated in this offering. We were able to turn in $65,000 for food in Ukraine. Uh, I, that's what happened in this district alone, just for the few churches. But then the, our church in Oklahoma City turned in another $60,000. So just out of our churches, we, in participating in this offering, we were able to raise $125,000 for Ukraine. I know your hearts have been broken about what's going on there. Uh, we are hoping and praying for an end to come to that as soon as possible in a good kind of way. I know you're praying for the wonderful people in Ukraine. In fact, we have a lot of churches in Ukraine. Uh, the offerings that were raised in Oklahoma City was to our World Missions Department, and those funds should go to our churches and our church families in the Ukraine. I've had the joy and privilege of visiting Kiev. Myself, I believe Brother Jimmy McKenzie is here with Brother Peter Bible. And Jimmy and I were together on one of our trips to the Ukraine and visited there and ministered there in our main church in Kiev. And well, we say Kiev, and they say it's Kiev now, but we were a part of that, and I thank God for it. We're going to abbreviate our choir singing a little bit this morning to give time for the special songs and special singing. So, welcome you now. I'll open with a prayer. And then the choir will say, Father, thank you so much for the joy of being in your house. This is the Lord's house. And you, you have already made yourself known because we feel your presence. Even, even in making mundane announcements, your presence is here. But especially now that we're offering our prayers to you. We ask 
your blessings upon every single person individually in this congregation this morning, but also corporately every family that's represented. We pray for the blessings of God to be upon our church family. I pray that you'll help us to bring praise and honor to your name in everything that we do, everything that we shall say, and, and particularly in this worship time this morning, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, sing along with the choir. My God, it's so good to see you all out here this morning. My heart is just so full of joy and gladness this morning. I'm so glad that we came into God's house this morning but to worship Him in spirit and in truth. God is so good to us. Brother Riley, I haven't been in service with you since Lake City, but I praise God this morning that we're back in service together again. We're going to have a good time here today. So let's everybody stand and sing together. Come on and praise the Lord.
You know what the needs are of the church, and you know what the Lord has blessed you with this past week, or this past month, or whenever. And you want to give back to Him in His time. I'll ask the ushers to come now for prayer, and then they'll receive the morning time. And you will be blessed of God for everything you do in that regard. He said, Give, and it shall be given unto you. That's what he said in his word. That's a, a marvelous command with a promise. You give, it shall be given unto you. Press down and shake it again. Running over shall be given to your bosom. That's the word of God. Jesus himself said that. So you can believe that with all of your heart. The essence will come now. You can get ready to do it. Yeah. Has God been good to you this week? I know he yeah. has. Would you, would you like to say amen in that response? Yeah. If the Lord has been good to you, just say amen. Yes, I yeah. 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 He's a wonderful, wonderful Lord. Yes. Brother well, Andy, would you offer the prayer? I'm the most righteous and heavenly Father Lord. We thank you for this opportunity to ever be in your house again this day. Father, we do thank you for your many blessings, Lord, that you have bestowed upon the hearts and the lives of your people. Father, we ask you to reach down in the morning our service. To anoint everything that would be said and done, Lord, it should bring honor and glory to you. Heavenly Father, we ask you to touch our Lord's people, say it before we be too late. Touch the you sick and suffering in their body this morning, Father. And Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless in the offering. Bless those that ain't to give. Those that cannot be up in thy kingdom. Take and use you when lies the soul of your kingdom before we be too late. Heavenly Father, we be sure to give you praise, honor, and glory for all that would be accomplished. And we ask it in your holy and your precious name this morning. Amen and amen. amen.
say we've been in the presence of a holy God. Amen. A God who can radically change our lives. And I love what you said about the name of Jesus. Even when you can't pray, mm -hmm. just breathe his name. He knows our utterances. That's scriptural. Um, sing this with me. And, and I want to hear you sing, okay? Is that all right? <laughs> so don't, don't just mouth it. I think there are times when our brain needs to hear our mouth say what's in our hearts. Then we can begin to live it. Jesus, 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 there's just something
one day or a week before she passed away, she wasn't sick. In fact, it was COVID that took her life. And we were riding along together. I was taking her to the grocery store, and I said, Kelly, what about you and the Lord? She said, Dad, you don't have to worry about that. Everything is all right with me, Lord. I said, now I thought that, but I want to hear her say it. I said, if that means if you passed away today, you would go to heaven? She said, by all means, of course. She said, that is no the same. Why would you even ask me that? I didn't know that she only had about a week, and she would be in heaven. I had no idea of that. She just called me one Sunday afternoon and said, Dad, I'm not feeling well. I think I'll go to the emergency room, and I said, I'll come and go with you. But she said, no, she knew I had service time at 6 o'clock. I said, well, I'll, I'll see you tomorrow morning. She said, that'll be fine. But the next morning at 6 30, the hospital called me with asking me for my permission to put her on the ventilator. In two weeks' time, she was gone. But she was redeemed. I have been redeemed. I want to do that chorus one more time. Ah, I, I am redeemed. Oh. Oh. 
thanks for me because the Lord has proven himself to me so many times and I'm sure the same can be said of you. There have been times when you thought on your own that things were too difficult and you were not going to make it and that no one really cared for you. But I am saying uh, the title of the song is God will take care of you. You can interpose that word me instead of you. God will take care of me. Listen to the words and let it bless your heart.
but no one knew what to do. Their king had died. In fact, he took his own life, King Saul. And a lot of folk were trying to elevate his son, Ishbosheth, to the throne, but a whole lot of folk didn't want him, but they wanted David. David was now king of Judah down in Hebron. So they sent an array of people down there, and they spoke to David. They took their offer, came back to Jerusalem and united the kingdoms of Judah and Israel. And now Israel was united again. But in those times, there was political conflict. There was political unrest. Our times offer us that same thing. There's political unrest in our nation, in the world. Who knows what is going on in the Ukraine and with Russia? We know from television, but really, what's wrong with a man like Lester Putin who has no conscience at all? But he thrust the whole world into a quandary. What should we do? These are difficult times, but listen to these words. In times like these, we need a savior. In times like these, we need an anchor. Be very sure. Be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. This rock is Jesus. Yes, he's the this rock is Jesus, the only one. Be very sure, be very sure. Your anchor holds and brings the solid rock. In times like these, we need a body.
Oh, 
what it's called, I guess, in the English handling of this kind of thing is an interpolation. It's where one story interrupts the other story, but the two stories mutually interpret each other. Jesus was on his way to the home of Jairus, interrupted by a woman with an issue of blood. And while he was talking to her, Jesus was telling her, you have been healed. Hallelujah. Someone from the home of Jairus came up behind him. And they weren't talking to Jesus. They simply said, to the disciples that were with him. Why bother the master any longer? The child has died. That was the word that was given. Why trouble the master any longer? He was coming, but he didn't make it in time. The child is now dead. And the Bible says that when Jesus heard that word. He turned and said to the woman, you're healed. You're healed. Now, now here's the essence of what that, those little stories mean. Jesus overruled what he had overheard. I came this morning to tell you that Jesus is an overruler. He can overrule sickness in your home. He can overrule financial reverses in your home. He can overrule drug addiction or alcohol addiction. He can overrule and override family issues. He can overrule the discouragement. He can overrule unforgiveness. He can overrule any kind of sin that you might have in your life. It has become a struggle with you. I don't know what it is and I don't know to whom I'm seeing. But I, I came this morning to tell you and I couldn't get it out of my spirit. Jesus is an overruler. They came and said to someone behind him, don't bother him anymore. It's too late now. The child has died. And Jesus turned quickly and said, Only believe. Hallelujah. Only believe. Hallelujah. I have told you earlier the child will live. So he made his way to the home of Jairus. Put them all out, except Peter, James, and John. Hallelujah. And the mother and dad. And the Bible said he went into the room where the dead child was laying. He got over by the wall and prayed. And then he turned to the little child and said, Tell the two my with his being interpreted little girl. I say he arrives. And the dead girl got up. Hallelujah. He has the power to overrule demon possession. He has the power to overrule a killing sickness. He has the power to overrule death itself. Let me say this. I'll let you read the scriptures in Mark chapter 5. Jesus is in this room this morning yes, he is. to overrule something in your life that has been giving you trouble. Did you know there are times when trouble can become so intense until it will torment you? Yes, sir. You can't get away from it. You came to the church this morning. Of course you came to worship. You might not have known you came for another purpose. And that was to meet the overruler. Yes. Right. And then the overruled. Yes. Then you don't see the devil. He knows how to get into a grip sometimes. Just to hinder and distract. Well, that's all I want to feed him. Jesus can overrule any distraction in your life yes, that may be taking your mind off of him. Yes. Wow. Talk about that 10 minute sermon. 
would you say? The old rulers here. Pastor, if it won't be out of order before we dismiss, could we hear Brother Briley play a couple of songs? Yes. Just for us, for the congregation. Yes. But right now, before he does that, you can do that. Miss Kate, would you come? I want to anoint her. In behalf of her friend, be made your cousin. Nancy Evans, a young lady. Can you come right here? Oh, you're younger. I want to anoint you, daughter. And you know what? How bad I use that little text. Jesus will overrule in that city. Amen. I know what you said, Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the overrule of Jesus and death, and whatever other problems that may come against us, you will overrule us. Yes, he And so now, Lord, I touch the okay. cave. I thank you for her loyalty to you and your word and ask for prayer. We know that while we pray here, your hand is already there with Jesus. Oh, yes. Touch her and make her aware of oh, yes. the Holy Spirit that you're doing something marvelous yes. and life changing in her life. Oh, in Jesus' name, I give you praise.
and give them the needs of their lives. In Jesus' wonderful name, we give you praise. Yes, praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. For saving my soul. Thank you, Lord.
prayer. And thank you for coming. God bless you. I want us to have a time of fellowship as we close this morning. Go by the table out front. There's a card there. We have some extra ones made up. Pick one of these off, off the table there. It's, it's instructive and informative. So pick one of these up on your way out. God bless you. I'll just dismiss for this saying. God bless you. Go in, in peace and shake each other's hand and say I love you to at least four people before you leave. Okay? God bless you. How are you?